to introduce our resource persons Shubham Dodia and Spurti V for today's workshop. Shubham Dodia has received BE degree from Department of Computer Science and Engineering, MIT Academy of Engineering, Pune in 2016. He has received M.Tech degree from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, National Institute of Technology, Goa, India. He has worked with Byju's the Learning App as a business development associate. He is a gold medalist throughout his BE degree, and he is also awarded Director's Gold Medal for M.Tech degree from Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Venkaiah Naidu. He has published certain research articles in well-known journals and conferences. He has also reviewed some high impact factor journals. He is a IEEE student member. His areas of interest are medical imaging, human computer interaction, deep learning, artificial neural network and machine learning. His current research work focuses on lung cancer detection and classification. Currently he is pursuing PhD degree in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering National Institute of Technology Surat Kal Spurti V has received BE degree in Information Science and Engineering from GM Institute of Technology Davangere in 2016 She has awarded M.Tech degree in Computer Science and Engineering from National Institute of Technology in 2018 She has been awarded M.Tech degree from Honorable Vice, Vice President of India, Sri Venkaiah Naidu. She was chosen as a representative from India in International Speech Conference, Interspeech 2018 in Tribalite, Hyderabad. She has guided several interns from various renowned institutes. Her research interest includes audio signal processing, machine learning and deep learning. Her current research work focuses on acoustic scene classification using deep learning. Currently she is pursuing PhD degree in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, National Institute of Technology Surat Kal uh, Surat Kal. Thank you. uh hello ma'am uh, can you listen me just can you give this idea am i audible to everyone hello uh, yes mr shubham uh, okay. uh, just just a minute i will we'll get back to you Oh, can you can you hear me now hello yes sir now i can hear you okay sir before starting this few instructions to all students the attendance and quiz link will be shared at the end of the session in chat box only and all people will see and kind of mute yourself and turn off your videos and this is for all three days now i request shubham dodi to take over the session uh oh, hello everyone this is shubham and uh, i really feel uh, happy that uh, you people have given me this good opportunity to Uh, have this session uh, in your renowned institute and uh, thank you for the warm welcome ma'am so i'm going to share the screen can everybody see the screen ma'am is it uh, properly visible and am i audible can you just yes sir yes sir it's visible okay so yeah uh, so without wasting time uh, we'll start with the topic with the session because ma'am have very well introduced us and thank you for that ma'am so yeah we would like to begin this 3 days workshop on introduction to machine learning and deep learning with keras so what goal or what aim we have uh, via this workshop is to uh, just give you a thorough idea about what machine learning is 
how neural networks function how they were introduced what was the background uh, knowledge or background idea behind introducing machine learning then how did deep learning enter the field uh, after machine learning what were the drawbacks of machine learning and how deep learning took over it and right now is proved better compared to machine learning so there are many deep learning packages that uh, will be used during coding but uh, we are going to go with the keras package which is really good for uh, deep learning uh, coding part so this is the schedule that we have planned many of you must have gone through it but uh, just let me brief you today uh, for 2 hours 11 to 1 we are going to introduce machine learning deep learning and artificial intelligence and uh, try to differentiate between those what exactly are minor differences because many people get confused with these three, three terms later we are going to uh, make you understand what exactly train test and validation data is how it is split into this three parts then certain concepts such as generalization and classification clustering basics then we are going to go with uh, neural network a bit in detail one of the algorithm will be introduced and one numerical will be uh, shown to you how it is solved here then we are going to introduce few activation and loss functions to uh, make you understand that how neural network how we can play with the neural network how we can modify the neural network what are the parameters that need to be fine tuned to give good results and then later two days we'll go with another deep learning basics so this is for the day uh, let me exactly begin with what machine learning deep learning and artificial intelligence is so uh, everyone out of you have heard these terms uh, but maybe are confused about them so uh, the most important thing is to understand that artificial intelligence is the superset to everyone inside that we have machine learning and the subset of machine learning is deep learning many people get confused that inside neural network we have deep learning but deep learning is a bit more a vast domain and then inside that comes neural network so if you try to understand that neural network is a part where all the four are intersecting that means that there are many applications where all of these four terms are same so if we go to define them artificial intelligence will refer to the human intelligence so what we have is the natural intelligence correct we have natural intelligence because when you are a kid you don't know many things but meanwhile when you grow up slowly slowly you learn things from your environment when you walk you fall then you understand that i should walk properly if i step two or three uh, steps together i'll fall maybe so these are the things uh, which are called as the natural intelligence so what you are trying to do in artificial intelligence you are just trying to simulate you are trying to construct the same process again the natural intelligence is been converted to artificial intelligence okay more importantly what this includes is we are going to definitely do this on machines and we should include certain things that is learning reasoning and self correction because these are the qualities that we as a human possess so obviously we learn every day and night now i am telling you something you are learning few things at the same time you will ask me the reason why are you saying so so everything that happens in our day to day life has a reasoning behind it so learning and reasoning are very important part of human daily routine at the same time whenever you get some mistakes you self correct yourself so these are all the qualities of human intelligence natural intelligence which we are trying to simulate into a machine which is known as artificial intelligence now at the same time we have machine learning as a subset of artificial intelligence right so now these are done machines are built self reasoning is given learning is given and reasonings are given and artificial intelligence system is created but now what exactly a machine learning does different than that so machine learning uses statistical algorithms now what do you mean by statistical algorithms so we have many algorithms that we use in day to day life deep learning algorithms machine learning algorithms conventional algorithms so all the algorithms which use a mathematical model okay mathematical model means everything that you draw a curve that you draw a line that you draw everything are nothing but some mathematical formulations right so you derive a formula you give some values and it it, it develops a curve a curve that will fit to the data so machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence that uses statistical learning algorithms to build the system because at the end the goal is to build a system which will have a ability to automatically learn 
Now automatically learned means we are trying to learn the machine. Once the machine is learned, we can't give the training data again and again and again and again because a day will come where you have to use these algorithms in the real time environment. You have to give it to various companies. So these companies should have now the, the, the model should have the ability to learn automatically and improve from the experience. Improve from the experience means the past experience. And every day it will get new and new data. It should keep up, keep on learning from that experience and it shouldn't be explicitly programmed. That is the most important quality. Because once you train your machine learning model and you say that my model is very good, now you can test any data on this. What they expect is to give any set of testing data and your model should perform very well on that testing data. So that is the machine learning goal. And coming to the deep learning, it is one more subset of this two important concepts and you are exactly trying to mimic the human brain. Now in what term? So we know that our human brain is made up of neurons. Okay, you must have heard this term. term. So our body is made up of cells, right? Everybody knows. At the same time, human brain is made up of neurons. The basic element which is used for any type of communication in the body. So what happens, anything, ha suppose there is a mosquito on the left hand, okay, and you are talking to someone else, you are not even seeing that mosquito, but at the same time that mosquito bites you, you don't even look there, at, at, on the left hand it has bitten, from the right hand you will kill that mosquito without seeing the location of that. So what exactly happens, when the mosquito bites, the neurons are activated, the neurons communicate to each other there is some important electrochemical process that happens. And then these neurons give an instruction to the right hand that you have to hit the left hand and kill that mosquito. So this happens internally. So this is human brain and it has trillions and billions of neurons in your brain, which are connected to each other. So what we are trying to do is we are thinking that human brain is very amazing. It's very powerful. Why not we mimic the same brain in the computing part? So that whatever systems we make in the day to day life, we can use them for many things, right? Many applications we can use them. So we are trying to mimic the human brain. But at the same time, let me tell you that why do we say it's a deep network? It's a deep learning, right? So when I say it's a deep network, I refer to the number of the layers. So number of the layers in the network should be deep. It should be very used. Because you are not building a normal neural network, right? Because two to three layers and a small neural network is machine learning or the conventional or the traditional part. But when you are talking about the deep learning, you are talking about 50 and hundreds of layers, which are very deep because human brain is having millions of neurons. So in today's era, till now, we are not completely able to mimic human brain. Because if you build a system with millions of neurons and connecting them to each other and such huge computing power, you don't have. In today's era, we don't have such high supercomputers which will help you to mimic human brain. So that is still a task, but yeah, day by day, everyone is building new algorithms, developing small, small things, introducing various brain concepts into the architecture to make it more and more smart. So deep learning is basically mimicking the human brain it can also be defined as multi-neural network architecture because it's a neural network with multiple layers, right? So multi-neural network architecture containing a large number of parameters and the layers, okay? So I hope these three things are a bit clear to you, but I do want to go in more details about them. So yeah, what is artificial intelligence? So now I think I have introduced you with the concepts. Now reading part will be good enough to explain you what exactly it is. So AI, and it's an effort to automate intellectual tasks performed by humans. So basically smart tasks, reasonable tasks, where you have to learn, where you have to self-correct. Such tasks, such tasks, uh, we have an, if we have made an effort to automate all these human intellectual tasks. AI is any technology that enables a system to demonstrate human-like intelligence. Artificial intelligence and natural intelligence are very similar. Exactly, they both are same, right? They, we are trying to map them. We are trying to map natural intelligence or artificial intelligence. So now let me talk about a few applications about AI. Where are, where do we use them? So you talk, you order daily many things over Amazon, Flipkart, Paytm. 
you read many articles on google news you watch netflix these days you go for the google photos to save save in this drive so these are all the tasks that we want to do as a human and we do in daily to daily activities right so to make it automated is nothing but artificial intelligence so suppose let me give an example we talk about search engines we talk about suggest engines so suppose you order uh, you keep on searching something on amazon uh, gifts okay you keep on searching uh, gifts for birthday birthday cake birthday watch or anything that you want to gift to a friend of yours now what happens is after 2 to 3 days this browsing history has been taken by amazon or various companies many companies are there who sell the data so these companies now collect the data they analyze them and they try to understand that this person is ordering many things or searching many things so why not show him the suggestions so this is what a person does right if i am a shopkeeper and i understand that you have come and you are searching into the gift section continuously looking here and there so i understand as a human being that yeah this person seems to be interested into that part so why not show him some uh, things which are related to uh, those gifts so that is how search engines work so the lot of millions and billions of transactions that people do every day are being given to the various companies which daily basis on the daily basis they analyze this data and based on this analysis they interfere something and that interference is being used by these companies as a suggestion because you will see when you search something somebody looks for weight loss something how to weight loss how to do weight loss what are the 10 tricks to do weight loss suddenly some notifications will come to you this machine is helpful this ayurvedic uh, this this blah blah thing is helpful for you to weight loss so these are the things where ai is used in day to day life talking about what exactly machine learning is just a second yeah so what exactly machine learning is so it is the art and science of giving computers the ability to learn because we want machines to learn right not humans to do the task so initially we will make them them learn but at the end of the day we want computers to be smart so giving computers the ability to learn to make decisions from the data because the aim is to have decisions because you just can't make learn computers right computers at the same time should be very smart strong and powerful which will help us to decide that yes sir this should be done and without being explicitly programmed because see i'll explain you two concepts now machine learning and uh, classification classical programming so classical programming is something that you do in c programming c++ programming on your daily basis what you do you tell if this is the thing then that is the thing so you give some rules to the classical programming right you want to print uh, some uh, numbers in the ascending order right so what you do you create certain rules that if the number is greater than this swap this if the number is smaller than this swap this and do this and at the end of the day print the numbers in the ascending order so these are the rules which you already give to the classical programming and you give the data because at the end of the day you need to understand that data is the most important part in the machine learning and deep learning domain so data and rules are already given to the programmer uh, to the system and then you expect the answer that suppose i give this data what is the answer tell me but in the machine learning we have huge amount of data these days because you go on youtube you search for one video you will get hundreds of relevant videos correct every day nowadays people are going digital everybody has a mobile which has 128 gb or 256 gb of memory 6 gb 8 gb ram so everybody clicks initially we used to have a nikon camera you used to click only one family picture nowadays in the mobile you click 20 30 50 pictures at the same time so you can understand that millions and billions of gbs of data is getting generated on daily basis correct so data is huge now you can't all the time create rules by yourself so what you want you want a machine to do that because human will go mad after 20 rules you won't be able to remember so you can't do that right so you give data at the same time you give answer that listen machine if such data comes you should answer this listen machine if such data comes you should answer this and now machine learning should be smart to understand the data along with the answers and it should generate the rules by itself why do we need rules because tomorrow when new data comes our machine learning model is very smartly trained now based on these rules you will just give it some data and it will be able to classify the output because in classical programming we have very less data and very basic problem right so you can generate rules by your mind and you can code it 
but in machine learning you can't do that right because data is very huge data variability is very more okay let me give you a small example so suppose uh, we take an application of number plates okay so in number plates you can see that the people write two into various different patterns two can be written as english wala two kannada different two marathi different two hindi different two so two can and two also is written like one by many people so there are lot of variations for only digit two so many times what can happen we can as a human smartly tell that this is a two but machine may make the mistake so data is very important so huge data needs to be tra uh, trained to the model you can't just explain machine like classical programming that this is the two and output should be two because when the new two will come machine will misclassify it so it is not as simple as classical programming so machine learning there you will give data as well as you will give answers by answers we mean class labels i'll explain this concept to you once again when we go forward but for now let us move to the third concept that is deep learning right so deep learning is nothing but the subfield of machine learning and what you are trying to do you are trying to mathematically form a framework for learning this representations of data and it is a multi stage way to learn because you are not going for a small network you are going for a huge network a deeper network so that is why it's a multi stage way we are going to use neural networks to gain very deeper insight into our data by stacking different layers on the top of each other so one layer second layer third layer fourth layer you are stacking you are making a big stack uh, as a network and then you are training the data that is nothing but a network neural network but a deep network that's why we say that deep network it works same as like as human brain works that is the ultimate goal of deep learning right though we are not able to achieve it but the functioning is same okay now let me introduce you why deep learning so this is a very beautiful diagram that was given by this graph was given by andrew ng a very famous person who works in machine learning and deep learning so see x axis is amount of data which means the data is increasing towards right and y axis is performance which means the above we go the better performance is obtained correct so x and y axis you understood now what was observed when we had very less data okay see initially when we had very less data the performance was going up and up and up for the older learning algorithms which means machine learning algorithm so when the data was less the performance was good but at a point when we gave lot of data this machine learning algorithms started to saturate they started to not perform good they started to just stay there only the performance was coming till 80 85% and then accuracy was stopped and 85 85.1 85.2 85 so even after hundreds of epochs and iteration the result was not increasing as expected so this was the inference drawn at the same time what they did they tried to give it to the deep learning so they could observe the more the data you give the more the performance increases so that is why nowadays you have huge amount of data and for this huge amount of data what you require is deep learning correct so deep learning is one such very good framework with the amount of data increasing the performance will never decrease it will keep on increasing there are certain limitations to it also that model may overfit or something these concepts will be introduced later okay so deep learning is a good concept which increases the performance with the amount of the data increase so always whenever you go for any deep learning model first thing that should come into your mind should be deep learning models are data thirsty which means they want more and more and more data so please give lot of data to the deep learning algorithm if there is a limitation in your project you don't have large amount of data because there are certain applications where you won't find data correct suppose some crime scenes are there so uh, people don't means the government or the forensics labs don't expose or don't make the data publicly available very easily so at that time you won't get lot of data sets publicly available so that time you can go for techniques such as augmentation you can increase the data to train to your model but just keep in mind that deep learning models are data thirsty and the more the data the more the good performance of a deep learning model okay now i am talking about data 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 but uh, to begin with you should first understand what exactly data is correct because uh, i told you that a model means there are lot of variabilities in the data so before going to the models you should first understand what data is how does a data look like 
how do we the project it into two or three or four dimensions so what are the different parameters then we, that we look after data so data is divided into three sets it is divided into training validation and the testing many of you must have heard only training and testing data right nobody hears about the term validation also nobody uses the validation data these days but that is a bit of wrong concept so why and what are the importances of these let us understand okay so now initially you have a model you are creating a model what is the ultimate goal of that model that if the new data comes that model should classify the network very nicely correct if i am classifying if it's a boy or a girl and i give a, a, a features of a boy and a girl it should correctly tell me yeah this is a boy this is a girl that is the ultimate goal right so that is why we need to train the model initially because how will the model understand that it is a boy or a girl until you don't train it because you are trained you know the features that if she is or if, if a girl is if a, somebody is having big hairs if these these are the features then she is a girl or this is a boy so these are certain features right you need to train the machine as well so to train the machine you have a data that is called as training data correct so what you are trying to do is you are trying to fit your model so the sample of the data used to fit a model the actual data set that we use to train the model is called as the training data the model sees and learns from this data understood so the model will learn from the training data and now let us go to the third data set that is test data set so now this is the data set which is like completely unseen to the model the model have never seen this data because if you show and make the model train on this data what is the point of the result right this should be completely unseen data when you give this data set to the model it should classify the performance of the system will be evaluated on the test data because test data is something that anybody wants the performance to be good on okay so suppose i am a company okay i am a company who is wanting to build a neural network for some application so what i do i give you a, a project i pay you 10 lakh rupees and i say see this is the data and now you build a very good network for this so you are a person or a resource person who does this for me so you take lot of amount of data and train the model on that right and then now i won't give test data to you because you will fit your model on test data also and now when i'll test the model it will obviously show good performance so what i do i keep some of the data reserved aside i don't show it to the model I, this is a complete unseen data okay so test data the sample of the data used to provide an unbiased evaluation unbiased means what it should not be a biased thing if you show this then it's a biased thing okay so it is unbiased evaluation it is a correct evaluation of a final model fit on the training data a model that you have fit on the training data where you evaluate this and that should be unbiased one so this is the test data but now the question comes what exactly is validation data because model is trained on training data it is tested on the testing data it's unseen data testing data so now as a as a company person who have uh, hidden the test data how will you understand that your model is even uh, performing good on the unseen data so what you do suppose there are 1000 samples okay out of 1000 samples i kept 100 samples for myself to uh, test the data i gave you just 900 samples so what you will do out of 900 samples 800 samples you will train the model and you will also keep the 100 sample aside to show it to a network like a unseen data correct so validation data is it's one application is it can be used as a test data to see if our model has really fit good on the training data okay and the another application is it also helps to fine tune the parameters the hyper parameters so what are the parameters and what are the hyper parameters these two concepts will come in the later neural network part because until you don't understand what neural network is i don't uh, i can't exactly tell you what hyper parameter is okay so in a neural network there are weights there are biases these are the parameters but when you go for some optimization of your neural network you you go for tuning the parameters very well there are some uh, learning rate certain parameters that will help you to fit your model very well and for the optimization thing those are the hyper parameters so when your model is very well trained the way the bias is nicely fit now on the training data now you give validation data to see 
uh, it, that what kind of result we will obtain like a testing part only and we will also few hyper uh, fine tune uh, some of the hyper parameters on the validation data so validation data the sample of the data used to provide an unbiased evaluation same unbiased because it is also unseen of a model fit on the training data set while in addition tuning model hyper parameters so validation data is that let us visualize it or a diagram see that is the complete original set which means it is a complete data now what i have done is i have done it into training testing set now one of the question will arise sir what should be the ratio to divide this train and test set correct so it is up to you i would say if you have lakhs and millions of data sample then you can take the training data set as 90% and test 10% testing data set because even if i have 1 lakh sample i can train the model on 90000 samples because there will be lot of variabilities which will be helpful to fit my model and 10% is 10000 samples so 10000 samples are trustworthy where i can trust the model on the testing set okay so 90 10 is a good ratio there but suppose suppose you have only say 1000 uh, samples so out of 1000 samples if you train on 900 samples and you test on only 100 samples people won't trust it people will say oh these 100 samples may be very good they may be very easy to classify uh, it can happen right because see suppose uh, i am doing a classification of a adult and child okay there are two classes that is one is adult one is children so i give features right now you will ask what is features so features are something that will help my model to classify so suppose what i features i'll give i'll give your height i'll give your weight correct because a children a small child his his uh, weight will be 30 40 kg at the same time his height will be some 100 or 120 cm but when i go for a adult person his height will be 150 170 180 cm at the same time his, his weight will be 60 70 80 kg correct so these are the features which will help my model to classify from between create two different parts so now if if i give a sample which is 20 kg and 40 cm it is very easy to classify as a child but there can be certain sample where a person's weight is 50 or 55 kg his height is 140 cm so here it can be a man also it can be a child also because a healthy children's weight can go up to 50 60 kg and his height can also increase if he is a healthy kid that time your system may misclassify it as a adult which should not be done so if such samples are there in the testing data performance will be bad but in case there are very very easy samples then your model will perform very good on it correct so that is why only 100 samples are not good enough to uh, they are not trustworthy basically the model can't be called as a reliable model a robust model so that is why in that ratio what you have to do 70 30 ratio so 700 samples can be kept for training 300 can be given for testing correct so this is the thing but now again let me remind you one thing if you give 700 samples to train your model do you think that your model will be fitting very good definitely not because 700 samples won't show it very much variable very vari variability so that is the problem why we want the training set to be very huge that is why we say that the models are data thirsty the more the data you show the more the intelligent system becomes okay so now it can be 70 30 it can be 90 10 it can be 80 20 it can be 50 50 it can be 60 40 so it all depends on you based on your data based on your wish how much you have to do there is no such perfect ratio to derive test and trend data okay so it, but generally what people do is they keep 80 20 or 90 10 or 70 30 out of these three they will follow okay now let's go to the bottom part now training data is even divided into training and validation because company did not give us test set right they said that we won't give it to you we will keep it to us we want to at the end of the day analyze how well you have trained our model because you have taken 10 lakh rupees so that is why that test set is kept with them so what we can do we can divide our own training data into training and validation set so that is why the training set is divided into training and validation set see now what happens below training set is given to the machine learning algorithm our machine learning algorithm is nothing but a statistical model which will you know create good 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 formulas to learn the model so that when test data set comes it performs good 
so it is given to machine learning algorithm which predicts some output we understand if it, if the output is correct or not if there is some error we again see there is a circle there is this repetitive circle so it keeps on happening this process keeps on happening until the model is learned very good so what validation set is used for it is used for tuning the parameters hyper parameters and evaluating that is how good our model has trained on training data set so that we do and at the end we give the test data set where we find out the final performance estimate that how well the system has given the results on the test data is the best thing okay now let me uh, tell you a new concept called as k fold cross validation okay so i told you in the uh, previous part here that the training set suppose we give 90% and test set we give 10% there can be a case arrived where that 10% of the data is very good so it is giving 98% of accuracy so people say that my model is getting 98% accuracy my model is very good trained okay but suppose i take some another train set and i give that for testing which is again unseen it may happen that model suddenly gives 83% accuracy it may happen right it is not that for one data if it gives 98 it will always give 98 so that is why you do another process that is k fold okay so suppose k fold now we are doing five fold here okay so see 1 2 3 4 and 5 division in the first fold you kept four parts that is eight suppose out of 100 samples you kept 80 training clear samples and 20 samples for validation okay now what you did in the another part you kept 20% of another sample for the validation purpose and rest 80 you kept for training so in the same way you repeat this process for five times and every time you validate the performance the first set is validated by performance one the second set is validated by performance two in the same way you get five different performances for five different folds correct so now what happened and then you average you add up all five performances 98 plus 93 plus 87 plus 96 and then you divide it by five so what you get is the average performance now what happened here is every data sample of the model is used for the training and every data sample model is used for the validation as well so you see blue 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 which means all the training uh, set is also used as a validation model unseen data so now what happened your model is learned on five different sets five times and now it can be called more reliable and more robust correct here you couldn't claim that correct because it's only 90 10 so data may be uh, bad or data may be very good but here you will make your model learn on all the variations that is why the result here can be trusted by any company so anywhere when you try to publish your paper now tomorrow day after tomorrow try to keep k fold cross validation in your paper it may be a five fold it may be a 10 fold i am talking about five fold here if it's a 10 fold model what you will do if there are 100 samples 90 will be training 1 to 10 will be testing next time 11 to 20 will be means validation sorry so 1 to 10 validation samples 11 to 90 11 to 100 rest of the 90 training samples then first 10 and 20 to 100 80 and 10 90 will be for the training purpose and middle 10 will be for the validation purpose so in the same way you divide it in 10 sets for the 10 different iterations that is nothing but a k fold cross validation so just training testing data division is not important in training set when you train and fit up and check the model with training and validation set you should also do the five fold cross validation which will help you to call your model a reliable model a robust model that sir we have done training and testing for various time on various folds so now we can and still we are getting 96% of accuracy sir so you can trust our model it is a very good performing model it has fit very good for that respective data correct now uh, let me again just go back and show you the concepts because i understand this course is uh, like 2 to 3 to 4 months course and suddenly to explain it in 2 to 3 hours it is difficult for you to understand so let me again just zest you with what we have learned so initially we understood what is ai what is ml what is dl what is neural network 
तो ए आई इज नथिंग बट एन इंटेलिजेंट लाइक ह्यूमन इंटेलिजेंस इज ट्राइंग टू बी इनकॉर्पोरेटेड इन टू द सिस्टम इन मशीन लर्निंग यू आर ट्राइंग टू बिल्ड स्टैटिस्टिकल अलगोरिदम्स यू आर ट्राइंग टू लर्न देम इन डीप लर्निंग यू आर ट्राइंग टू मेमिक ह्यूमन ब्रेन इट शुड बी अ वेरी डीप आर्किटेक्चर ओके देन वी हैव गॉन फॉर द डीप लर्निंग अंडरस्टैंडिंग वाई डीप लर्निंग इज अलगोरिदम इज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो बिकॉज इफ यू हैव मोर एंड मोर डेटा ओल्डर लर्निंग अलगोरिदम्स विच आर ट्रेडिशनल मशीन लर्निंग will saturate at a certain point of time and this is the most famous graph in the area which is used by everyone and when you go for a deep learning algorithm if you increase the amount of data the performance keeps on increasing then we understood that there are three types of data that is training testing and validation testing is the unseen data used to validate the model at the end training is the data to fit the model on the data and validation is the set where you try to fine tune the hyperparameters and you try to test the model by yourself in your lab that okay i have trained the model on training data now let me validate it okay and then we went for the k fold cross validation which is nothing but a five fold 10 fold 2 fold but most in the literature five fold or 10 fold are used okay so you can go with these two you average the performances of the five fold the advantages are you can call the model as a reliable model as a robust model at the same time you can train ev- the, the 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 train the model on the complete data set okay now let's come to a concept called generalization so if from today anybody questions you that sir can you tell me what is the ultimate goal of the machine learning you should answer one thing the ultimate goal of the machine learning is to improve generalization now what generalization means generalize listen it carefully generalization means how good your model will perform on the testing data which is not seen previously so this is very basic how well your model will perform on the testing data which is unseen previously correct so we don't want model to perform good on training because you will say sir accuracy kitni oh 97 98% sir training now when i suddenly give the test data it gives 87% 92% correct so that is why a model should perform perfectly fine on the testing data then only people trust your model okay so generalize so your the, so the goal of the machine learning is to improve generalization generalization is a measure of how accurately an algorithm is able to predict the outcome values for the previously unseen data because if the data is seen anybody can tell it it is a very basic thing to be done but if the data is unseen and then also your model performs very good the model is very good generalizable and it is trustworthy okay so this is generalization so the goal of machine learning is to improve the generalization now below are given the plotting of data okay so there are two parameters that they have, they have used time and the values x axis is the time y axis is the values so see the dot 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 parts are the data okay so data looks like this in two dimension okay so suppose you plot it on a height or weight so or maybe time or value so in two dimension data looks something like this so now what they did they tried to fit a model okay but the model is nothing but a statistical algorithm as i said it is a mathematical formulation because model doesn't mean it's a human or something it's it's a mathematical concept right so at the end of the day model is nothing but a mathematical uh, equations or formulas which will help to learn the data properly correct because when you learned about the different curves you understood the different formulation y equals to x square so something like this so now initially the dotted line is nothing but the model so what your model fit it is fit like a straight line so the equation could something be like y equals to mx plus c equation of a straight line so model is nothing but y equals to mx plus c but if you understand how badly did it fit so the model complexity was very low because the model was only y equals to mx plus c it's a x it's it's in a single plane x it's in not even in two dimension x square or x cube it's in x only y equals to mx plus c it's a straight line it couldn't understand the data okay so there we call the model to be underfitted the model did not fit right so it is underfitted now how exactly a model should look it should look like the second one but some people will have question that how can someone say like this because in the second diagram it the line has properly gone through the data it has understood the pattern of the data but in the third one 
the line has very well learned the data because the line is going through every set of points right see how well the line is going then you should say that the model is good in the third diagram but let me tell you one thing what happens that concept where the model gives very high result 99% 100% 98.7% there your model may learn well i'm not saying that but there it may be a case that the model has overfitted to talk in layman terms we want a student who doesn't mug up things a student who understand the concepts talked by the teacher we don't want someone to come and write as it is written in the book these people will be successful today going tomorrow for the higher degrees we have books very huge books some uh, degrees do not even have the books they just have the syllabus you have to explore the complete internet what will you do then how many things will you mug up so we don't want a student to exactly mug up the data we want the student to understand the pattern to understand the concept that is why a good fit model or a robust model is the middle one who is understanding the pattern of the data and we don't want the student who is mugging up the data point by point line by line that concept is called as overfitting okay and how does it affect bad i'll tell you okay come here see this slide so x axis is nothing but the model complexity what do i mean by model complexity how complex the model is when the model is very low complex in the left side it is y equals to mx plus c which is not able to learn the samples correctly and if it is not able to learn the samples correctly in the first diagram how bad will it classify definitely and that is not acceptable to us right so that is low model complexity middle one is the proper model complexity and we go in the high dimension the equation something looks like x to the power 8 plus 5x to the power 9 Minus three x cube plus four x square. So this is a very complex model, okay? Which will have a very weird curve. It will learn the data point by point, point by point, point by point. And the left, uh, the y-axis is the prediction error, okay? So the error is low on the bottom side, and as soon as we go up in the x-axis, the error increases. So we want the error to be less, correct? So now there are two curves in the diagram, okay? so there are two curves the below curve is the training curve and the above curve which is overfitting arrow is shown that is the testing curve okay so what exactly shown here when we had a very low model okay model complexity was low we built a very low model that time the prediction error see how top it is so prediction error was too much model was giving lot of error lot of misclassification then what it is they kept on increasing the model complexity see they came in the middle the error started decreasing 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 it started coming low and when they went for very high model complexity the error was very low it was near to the zero okay so that is the third diagram here correct if you see so the third diagram says that when you went to the high very high complex model the model learned the parameters very well here also in the training part we could see that model came down 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 with the complexity increasing the error got reduced 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 and you got a very less uh, error at the end so we thought why not now test all the three models the one with the low uh, this thing uh, model complexity the one with the middle and one with the high so now the above curve we gave the testing curve so testing curve we could see that for the lower it was definitely coming bad because the model couldn't learn anything learn anything it came down and down for the model complexity which was in the medium it gave certain amount of error we said that okay fine let me now test the model which was with very high complexity which gave very less error for the training part so when i tested it there the error was very high again the error kept on increasing so now this question occurred to me that while training i could observe that i kept the high model complexity and i got very less error but then while testing when i gave the model complexity as high why did the model perform bad so that concept is known as overfitting so when this happens that your model you train your model tomorrow you'll go you'll code something you'll train you'll get 97% accuracy 98% accuracy error very less and now you'll test the model and you will get only 87 82 92 you will feel that while training i got 90 97 why didn't i get while testing so you should understand 
that your model has overfitted your model has mugged up the data pattern and what we want is to not mug up the data pattern okay because i don't have a blackboard or something right now otherwise i could have shown you what are the disadvantages of this into detail but if you observe in the second line in the second diagram if there is a sample which is above the line it is class 1 if there is a sample below line class 2 but in the third diagram see how bad data patterns are fit so if there is anything in between that curve in the middle of the curve what exactly will happen is it may be of the bottom class but because there is a slope and it is looking in the upper class it will be misclassified there so your model should never mug up the data samples it should learn the pattern how data looks like it should just draw a line like that and that will show so that is why even if you get very high result or very low error in some model it may give bad performance in the testing data then you should understand that the model is overfitted so that is why and there are various methods to avoid that overfitting regularization and all concepts are there but understand this first that the model has overfitted and in the previous part the model has underfitted so where do you stop you stop at a model complexity in the middle where even if while training the prediction error is a bit high we don't bother but the least error should be there on the testing data so in the testing curve in the above curve the least error is the point where the Uh, line is intersecting so that is the point where we want the model complexity to be okay so generalization is a measure of how well our model will perform on the testing data set which is unseen to the model previously so the goal of the machine learning is to improve the generalization okay and how do you understand if a model is underfitted or overfitted so sir if the performance is very bad only 30 40% of accuracy definitely the model the data is not been learned by the model sir so definitely the model is underfitted how do you understand if a model is overfitted so sir if a model has given very high accuracy on the training data but sir it has performed a bit bad on the testing data it can be a case sir that the model is overfitted that is why sir we look for a model complexity which is in the middle not very complex model not very simple model okay so these things we'll slowly understand after coding so now you have uh, understood what is ml dl ai but ultimately what we want to do is to go with the machine learning part so machine learning is basically divided into three types it's divided into supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning that is semi supervised reinforcement learning is many times also called as reinforcement and semi supervised learning now you'll ask me what is the difference in all three so regression or the classification tasks are in supervised learning clustering belongs to unsupervised learning and the third category task driven things belong to reinforcement learning so what exactly is a supervised learning so if i am a person who is teaching to a student that listen this is something like this this is something like this for this question this is the answer beta for this question this is the answer if i teach some student with the data and the answer a class label that thing is called supervised because you are the supervisor there in your supervision things are going on that is why it is supervised learning okay in unsupervised learning what you do you don't give any answer you just give data you just give question to the student and say i can't help you it is not under supervision of me i have given you certain questions you analyze by yourself and you write the answer by yourself and reinforcement or the unsupervised learning is a combination of these two so let me explain you by an example okay so now if i take the same example of a kid or a elder person a adult i want to classify into two classes kid is one class adult is second class and height and weight are the two parameters i have taken correct i may have a diagram okay hmm. so this so see this is the classification part look at the first diagram so suppose age and salary are the parameters but i have taken height and weight and if the height is less and the weight is less the first class the below red dotted class is nothing but children and the above class is nothing but the adult so if if i tell the children by my own 
that understand kid if the height is less if the weight is less then he may be a kid if the height is more if the weight is more it he may be a adult so these kind of if i give with data if i give height and weight along with it i give class label also that he is a kid he is a adult he is a kid he is a adult at that time that learning is supervised learning okay and if i don't give anything i just give sample so kid should understand by its own but now you will think how will he understand how does the clustering perform this task so if you remember k means clustering it looks for the similarity measures okay so what kid will do now kid will see oh for this uh, first sample i have height of 110 cm and weight of 40 kg okay for the second sample i have height of uh, 105 cm and weight of 48 kg so i think 50 and 48 kg and 110 and 105 cm looks close so the similarity between these two sample is very good so let me combine these two so it clubs so in k means it does the same it finds the distance via distance formula and the least distance has been taken towards it and it says oh you belong to my class brother and now it sees suddenly one sample oh 78 kg 153 cm this sample looks very far to me because i am 50 kg he is 78 kg we do not belong to same so this sample belongs to another class in the same manner all the thousand samples are been uh, performing the similarity measure the ones with the very close similarity part are clubbed into one another are clubbed into another so this is the unsupervised learning where you do not tell the peop- the system uh, class labels you just give data and tell it to learn by itself okay this is unsupervised and you don't know the number of classes you see initially for the supervised i told him beta there are two classes one is kid and one is adult but for unsupervised i just gave data i said you form classes according to yourself i can't tell you this okay and for the reinforcement learning so i'll i'll give you an example this is an algorithm which learns to re, uh, react to an environment so see initially reinforcement learning is unsupervised he is some dumb kid and now with the experience it becomes supervised so suppose i explain you there is a kid who is 8 uh, 9 months or 1 year old that baby uh, has just started walking okay so it walks 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 it falls it walks suddenly it comes to stairs it you know it doesn't know that i have to pick up my leg and put it on the first stair so it just goes straight and it falls on the face then the kid because now he is unsupervised we have not taught him that beta take your leg up now he is dumb now he understood that oh there is some obstacle what i need to do i need to hold up my leg i need to put it on the first stair then i may not fall so now it has learned by that experience and now it has become supervised correct because the previous experience is now used in, uh, to uh, you know uh, classify better or to predict better so reinforcement learning is a combination of supervised and unsupervised and it uh, learns from the unsupervised part and then slowly slowly uses it for the supervised part okay look here quickly definition supervised learning the machine learns by using labeled data because we have told right that this is a kid that is a adult types of problem are regression and classification the type of the data provided is labeled data training is an external supervision because we are there to train the machine machine is getting trained by the outputs approach maps the labeled input to the known output because output is known right here we have told at the same time unsupervised learning the machine is trained on the unlabeled data without any guidance because we have told the kid this is the data you learn by yourself i can't tell you anything association and clustering are the application unlabeled data type of data is unlabeled because we have not told him that this is kid or adult he only understood by the similarity measure that oh 40 45 cm both both are same weights are same so let it let me put that in my uh, group so training it, it's there is no supervision provided and how does it approach understands the pattern and discovers the output on its own nobody is there to explain to that uh, system now talking about reinforcement learning it's an agent interacts with the environment right that kid has fall it interacted with the environment understood that oh i am falling so now i should react properly by performing actions and learning from errors or rewards 
so that is why it is rewards based so prob type of problems reward based problems are uh, solved by reinforcement learning the type of the data there is no predefined data here it will learn basically initially initially and then that data will be used for the further part so initially it was unsupervised slowly slowly with the experience it got supervised okay and training no supervision again because we didn't tell the kid it fall it fell down by its own and approach it follows the trial and error method right it went it fell down it again understood that oh now it uh, uh, there's some error and now again there will be a new trial by him to get succeeded so classification because our interest is classification right so classification it's a task of predicting a discrete class label okay discrete as in one or two boy or girl male or female okay so to classify it into two classes if it is a boy or a girl if uh, the the last uh, point is saying classifying an email as spam or non spam is a simple classification problem so these are certain problems so now the project that i am doing is on lung cancer so i am identifying if that uh, particular uh, nodule that we identify is a class cancer or not so these are the classification problems either this or that so you as a user can't do this right day to day continuously sit and do so that is why you can make a model learn this and uh, help the uh, model to train to fit and then uh, take help of the model to give the data and classify so in a classification problem data is labeled into one of two or more classes right because it's a labeled data by label what i mean with the data i give answers i give labels to it that if this is the data beta this is a kid if this is the data he is an adult so now you should learn so tomorrow when i give you some data sample i won't give you answer the job is to tell the answer from your end so a classification problem with two classes is called a binary because uh, two classes so binary classification if there are more than two classes it is a multi class classification problem correct so now see machine learning and deep learning classifiers if you divide the classifiers into two part the traditional or the conventional or the machine learning are these support vector machine k nearest neighbor neural networks random forest discriminant analysis ada boost fuzzy based so all these are mathematical models which are traditional or conventional <laughs> now a days we have deep learning models which are pnn recurrent deep network belief network alexnet capsule net restricted boltzmann machine long short lstm long short term memory rnn resnet lot of networks nowadays and every day you are getting new new networks with certain modification with certain intelligence so this is something about machine learning and deep learning classifiers you may slowly slowly explore it now clustering it is similar to classification only right because see here there is no such difference if we look around classification is first second is the clustering you have uh, drawn a line a model uh, a curve is fit to separate the data in classification and in clustering what you have done is done the same part with the two clusters but the difference is there are no predefined class labels in the clustering it is an unsupervised learning technique and the goal of clustering is to find similarities within the given data set and then put them into respective classes but the most important part you need to understand is the number of the classes is unknown in the clustering task because you didn't know right that the classification was only for the kid and adult it could be for uh, anything else also right it could be for uh, three classes also <clears throat> kid kid adult and the old age people so it could be three class also so it has to decide on its own if the parameters are very near to each other the values are very close the similarity index is very high you keep them in one class others in another class if there is some one or two samples which is not in both the class that is outlier that is a wrong sample but if there are many samples which even do not fit to two these classes then it may be a third class so there the number of the classes will be three but it is previously unknown and you do not give any label to the data okay so these are the clustering methods hierarchical partitioning based grid based and the machine learning based and uh, <coughs> algorithms for higher dimensional data so this is a different world clustering and maybe most of you must be familiar with the k means clustering right this is a short introduction about clustering uh, this is a diagram i hope you have understood it now this brings us to neural network okay uh, ma'am i want to ask do they want a 1 minute break or should i continue
we need hello uh, can we have a 5 minutes break yeah harshita that that's what i want to ask because it's a too many things to take together yeah, yeah. so we can have a break yeah okay so we'll okay. we'll continue after 5 minutes yeah 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 freshen up everybody
is everyone there can we start or should we wait two more minutes uh, yeah shubham you can start uh, shubham no problem okay. thank you ma'am thank you no i'm going to present the screen once again uh so now we have covered mldl ai we have covered training testing validation data we have underlined uh, we have understood that generalization is a concept where we try to get the best accuracies on the testing data which is not seen previously by the model we understood what a classification and a clustering uh models are and how do they function now we have come up to the most important concept that is neural network we are going to understand what exactly a neural network is we are going to understand two basic models of neural network we are going to see the activation function and the loss function that are used in the literature that can be used in the further by you and how you can modify them and what you can do with that so let me take you to the neural network slide so as the name suggest neural network so we are going to create a network of neurons because what exactly neurons are so as human body has cells as the most basic element uh, for your body at the same time your brain has a nervous system inside the nervous system there are millions and billions and trillions of neurons these are the basic building parts for your brain these are the part of the brain that has the intelligence these are the part of the brain that communicate with each other that process the certain information of what should be done and then every neuron uh, like processes certain thing it gives uh, it fires to the next neuron next neuron processes it fires to the next neuron so this is how these millions of uh, neurons communicate so neurons are nothing but the basic element of the brain which are the most important part so what humans are trying to do is replicate this brain thing into the coding part into the computer part right so human body is made up of trillions of cells cells of the nervous system called nerve cells or neurons what do they do these are specialized to carry the messages through an electrochemical process correct which means see we can see a neuron in the bottom so this neuron has certain parts so the center part is cell body which is nothing but the main part which controls everything inside the cell body there is a nucleus the most important thing where every of the information is getting stored processed everything then there is something called as dendrites if you can read uh, in the bottom dendrites so and there is something called in the in the middle called as axon okay so these are the three to four very important parts of neuron one is cell body one is nucleus one is dendrite and one is axon so what do they do now so the dendrites there are all these are dendrites okay all these are different branches they look like tree so these are the dendrites so these take input these take input from the different neuron okay see how this first neuron is connected with the axon to the another in the same way there are many neurons millions of neurons which are not shown here so dendrites take input from different uh, things different neurons now this info is been stored here first then this nucleus and the cell body uh, like nucleus is the most important part the intelligent part that does the thing and the cell body is the covering to it now here the information gets processed and we talk it as a information thing but what originally happens is a electrochemical process okay so here some electrochemical process happens and then that information on based on that information it is decided that, that the should the neuron should fire or not fire means what as the gun is firing a bullet at the same time the information gets fired so when it gets fired it goes from the axon which is a long fiber to the another neuron so this is how from the left part of the brain the neurons start activating they process some info pass to the another neurons fat 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 within fraction or millisecond 
this info gets processed within millions of neurons and the brain gives the decision to the human body to do any task so if you observe there is any fly that comes near to your eyes and within fraction of seconds your hand comes so you understand your hand is not doing things on your own there is a brain that is ordering something to your hand to be done and it's not the brain these are the neurons the nucleuses which are doing some reactions which are giving some decision to the heart uh, to the hand and then hand is processing and suddenly it is uh, doing the reaction thing okay so these things happen inside the brain now you will say okay it's a neuron uh, it does the most important uh, thing it processes some information and then it passes the information to the next neuron understood but how big or how small the neuron is so the neurons come in different shape different sizes okay but the neuron is said to be 4 micron wide to 100 micron wide now if you know micron means 10 to the power minus 6 of a meter so if you have a 1 meter and you do the 10 to the power minus 6 of that how small must it be it's a very small thing which is not visible by human eye okay so neurons are very small that is why inside this small brain we have millions and trillions of neurons so they are very small okay 4 micron wide to 10 micron wide okay this is the size that it can be a different shape different sizes and uh, so now uh, typically a neuron consists of three most important parts cell body dendrites and axon so cell body is something that directs all the activities of the neuron because yes it is the most uh, important part which decides upon something then coming to dendrites i told you dendrites are something that take the information from other neurons so the part that looks like a tree branch structure which are the short fibers that receive message they receive the message to the cell body from other neurons and then relay those messages to cell body and now after the processing is done so dendrites give the information to cell cell and the nucleus does some electrochemical process and these electrochemical process called as a intelligence is being given to the next neuron by axon so axon along a single fiber that transmits messages from the cell body to dendrites of the another neuron understood so these are the dendrites that receive the information from another neuron they give it to the cell body inside cell body there is a nucleus that that does the electrochemical process when the process is done this intelligence is transmitted via axons to the another uh, neuron and the another neurons dendrites are something they again receive and the connecting point no where see there is something called synaptic terminal so it is nothing but the connecting point for the dendrites along with this cell these are synaptic terminals where we receive the information okay so if you carefully observe to show you this is something <clears throat> like human brain structure these are see how many neurons are there and see the connections how complex they are there are again many small uh, axons or uh, uh, fibers connected to each other which are not even visible and this is not a very big brain part this is a very small part which has been zoomed if you unzoom this part it will look like complete lines connected here and there and do you think and and this is something that we are trying to mimic so do you think it is that easy to mimic a human brain no it is not because these millions and billions of connections if you try to do in your computer even if you give 500 1000 2000 neurons and 100 to 200 iteration or epoch your model will hang the system your system you should shut down and make it on again so there are no such super computers that are uh, built up till now to you know completely mimic a human brain we are on the way and we are hoping for the best so this is something uh, now what you understood uh, that what exactly a neuron is what exactly a brain is and how do the things function uh, and how the neurons communicate with each other and they pass some information okay we have to mimic that we will see that later but why exactly neural network what are the tasks that neural network has done uh, that our human brain has done and we want that to be done by neural network okay so what we are doing we are building a new network of the neurons only but the most important two goals for the neural network are brain modeling and artificial system construction 
as this name suggests brain modeling so definitely you are going to model our brain so you are going to model the brain which means you are going to uh, prepare a network of those neurons so the biological goal of constructing model is to build a system uh, exactly how the real brain works and why do we want that because our body our brain does very much important things such as perception seeing the things understanding the things we do some actions we do many learning our brain has a part where the memory is stored we have some thought process oh if it is this then that is that we have reasoning we have intelligence and we can formulate many medical solutions for the damaged patients as well so what we are trying to do we are trying to incorporate all these biological things inside a network neural network and that is why we are telling telling that we are modeling this brain so we are trying to take the qualities such as perception action learning memory thought intelligence and then with the help of this we are trying to formulate medical solutions to the damaged patients because there are many applications in my mtech project i have worked on brain computer interface so i have worked on eeg signals and brain only so there was a project where what we were trying to do we were trying to build a chair with the help of the eeg signals so when we have connected the eeg cap to a, a setup uh, to a wheelchair and when because the person was paralyzed right the person couldn't move he couldn't get up he couldn't walk he couldn't talk to us he was just sitting at a place so but his brain was working because he was not dead right but he couldn't just talk his body parts weren't moving so you can't sit all the time to that patient 24 by 7 and ask him do you want to go to washroom do you want to drink water are you hungry what is the feeling so you can't ask right you can't make a person sit all the time so you want these things to be done artificially so that is why a wheelchair was developed by us there we had a eeg cap to the patient's head what we were doing is we had extracted signals from our head and patient's head as well we were telling the patient and we were thinking to move ahead and we were recording the signals we were thinking to move back and we were recording the signals we are thinking to move left right and stop these were the five things that we were thinking now all the signals as a data were extracted then we gave this data to fed to neural networks we made them learn if the data if the data is that we are thinking to move ahead we are giving class label move ahead the system learned that if we are thinking to stop it is learning as stop now we build up a chip wherein we coded this thing into the chip and that was installed and connected with the eeg cap setup to the wheelchair now what could happen when in the real time a person could think that oh i want to move ahead real time data was getting captured that was going into the chip now this was the test data now chip was learning that oh okay this signals look something like moving ahead so the wheelchair is moving ahead the system is making the wheelchair to push ahead with the help of the motor the system is moving ahead then it is he was thinking patient inside his brain to stop then suddenly some signals are getting generated eeg signal and then suddenly the chair is getting stopped okay so this is a application a small application of how your brain is getting mimicked via this models so that is the ultimate goal of the neural network this is a one small application that i've shared with you there can be many such second is artificial system construction so this was the biological model the biological goal now the engineering goal to build efficient systems for real world application okay so we have to make machines which are very powerful very intelligent okay and we don't want to do tasks right nowadays robots and everything washing machines are washing the clothes for us so we want robots to do all the tasks the tedious tasks and we want to improve this performance as well with a very good performance we have to build the systems which are very powerful intelligent and we humans won't uh, you know do anything in that the robots will do and this all field is even known as artificial intelligence right so that that's how they are uh, interconnected now brain modeling and artificial system connection are the two tasks now this brings me to the first model so even if you have not focused till now i would request you to if you want to understand neural network please do focus because next 30 minutes are going to be a bit of difficult for you because i can't write here things but do try to connect to what i'm saying and visualize the things maybe slowly you will understand okay so in 1943 the first people who thought about this idea were maculo and pitts 
okay what are nakilo and pits so there was this these two people thought that her brain is functioning very smart right why don't we create a model which functions like a brain so they thought yeah this is a good idea so then they thought how to how to do that so they took a neuron they took a neuron okay this is the neuron on the left side where you can see the soma means the cell body the dendrite means the part which receives the info and the axon means the part which transmits the info to the another neuron okay so this was a neuron so they thought let us build the same mathematical model for this so what they did they constructed a model here if you can see in the right hand side upper part <laughs> they constructed a model they took inputs so the inputs lines that are coming are what are dendrites correct because dendrites receive info from another neuron so the inputs are coming now there is a summation part so when the dendrites give the information to the cell body soma there they are summing up they are summing up the info right there happens some electrochemical reaction so there the summing up info is happening and now after the electrochemical reaction neuron decides is this import, important uh, information should i even pass it to the another neuron so that intelligence if it is passed the neuron fires the information goes from this neuron via ax axon to another neuron so at the same time that intelligent task is done by the threshold t the activation function okay here comes the activation function into picture so activation function see how the name talks activation activation means activate something on it or maybe off it okay so on it means activate it means fire the neuron so what will happen the output will come or this is a single neuron right but in the neural network there will be thousands of neurons thousands of layers so that activation function will decide should i pass this information to the next neuron or not okay so here we have used the threshold function okay so what is threshold function threshold function says that i will set a threshold value that if your summation your calculation comes below the threshold the output will be zero okay and if it comes above the threshold the output will be one so see the last graph there it is shown that t is the threshold on the x axis if the values are beyond threshold means on means on the left side this the output is 0 0 0 and if the output is above threshold on the right side see above the output is 1 1 1 1 1 so there are two classes that is zero class and one class which is a binary classification so should it belong to class 0 or should it belong to class 1 will be dependent on the threshold okay so the threshold is useful to decide if the neuron should fire one or it should not fire and give the output zero now there is one more important thing that is weights here okay now let me tell you the intelligence in our brain is there no if we want to replicate that intelligence in the neural network it can be done via weight and one more thing that is bias i'll introduce that in the next part but right now focus on weights because tell me one thing can you change the inputs no we can't because inputs are something that are fixed i can't change the input input is something that will come data but how do i change the parameters then i have to train the model right so the model can be trained via weights so the intelligent parts is the brain uh, is the weight so if you are doing anything in the neural network what you are doing you are learning the parameters right so the parameters are weight so the ultimate goal at the end of training phase is to find out the perfect suitable weights that will help to classify the data with very high accuracy now i'll explain you what exactly weights do and why is it important i'll tell you in the next slide when we will come to numerical how important are the weights okay so what we do we have inputs we have weights these are the dendrites that come as input to the neuron that is nothing but the soma cell body nucleus there we do the summation weighted summation then that sum is passed to the threshold function and based on that we give the output so see the first formula is nothing but i into w that is input into weight i is input w is weight for the first same for the second row 
so that is why i the summation is from i equals to 1 to n because we are assuming there are n inputs coming so that is why i into w i1 into w1 plus i2 into w2 plus i3 into w3 so this is the weighted summation part that comes in the sum now this sum is given to a threshold function so that's it that is why f of sum so this sum is passed through a function and then you get the y as a output expected output of a model okay so this is nothing but the weighted summation and what is this function this function for now is a threshold function in literature if you have read i don't know how many of you are familiar with neural network but few may have read there is a sigmoid function there is a relu function there is a tanach function there is a swish function there are uh, many such functions and there are many functions which people are building but this threshold function is zero or one it's a very basic one dimensional function okay it doesn't give non linearity to your data okay so now until now what we have learnt is we have understood that there were Ma warren uh, this uh, uh, maculo and pitts who have designed a neuron in 1943 they have tried to uh, replicate the neuron via a model so they thought dendrites should be weights sorry dendrites should be inputs then the uh, soma does some electrochemical process right that should be summation of this input into weights and uh, adding up all and then uh, should the neuron fire this information to the another neuron will be decided on the threshold function and activation function that is this information important because it may happen that there may be some bad data which will classify uh, which will uh, make your classification bad so such information should not be passed to the next neuron right because if you give some wrong in wrong information now it it becomes a misclassification at the end that is why this threshold function is kept so this weighted summation is done this summation is passed through a function and then you get the output okay see now these is a neural network that is built by them a small neural network of a one neuron and uh, three uh, three uh, small neurons and uh, there are three gate that they have classified okay now what they did in the first not gate you understand okay one is input so only one neuron we require and one is output that will be coming here in the and gate input 1 and input 2 are there 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 that is why we require two inputs in the same way or gate we have two inputs correct input we know it is 0 and 1 okay in the not gate it will be once a 0 once a 1 okay what output we expect leave that aside but input is 0 and 1 so here black dot is input that we know but we don't know the weights right so initially what these people did these people did the weights manually what they did for this first model they gave weight as minus 1 see weight is intelligence here because in the and gate or gate everywhere inputs are same but weights are minus 1 and here they are 1 1 so if weights are different then only all the outputs will be correct so you need to take away one point from this that the intelligence in the neural network lies in the weight and the activation function okay so now what they did input they gave zero okay activation uh, input is zero and then into weight right they do here right input into weight i into w so i into w so zero into minus 1 which is nothing but zero so if zero is greater than the threshold threshold is minus 0.5 if zero is greater than minus 0.5 output one correct so e see here in my zero into minus one is zero and zero is definitely greater than minus 0.5 so the output will be one in the same way if you give one so one into minus one is nothing but minus one and minus 1 is small than minus 0.5 so if the output of this is less than the threshold then it should output 0 so here they have output 0 so see so this gate is perfectly modeled by this model okay now to make explain you it better we'll go with the and gate okay if the and gate will output only one if both the inputs are one one into one is one there you will get one for all the other three it should output 0 So, so here we'll go. So zero zero is the input. So zero into one plus zero into one means both are zero zero, right? So first input is zero only here. Weighted sum is zero. So is the zero greater than one point five? No. That is why the output is zero because 
both the inputs are getting output zero and it is not about threshold that is why the output is zero in the same way zero and one so first zero into one here in the left part we get zero only and another is one into one which is one so weighted summation now zero plus one you have got that is one and one is not greater than 1.5 is one greater than this threshold no so output zero so that is the output is zero the third way it is same one into one and this zero into one that is zero so one plus zero is one which is not greater than threshold 1.5 that is output is zero now both the inputs are one and the weights are one so one into one plus one into one is one one and we both add them summation part that is two and two is greater than threshold value 1.5 that is why the neuron is firing the output one understood so that is why the output is zero 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 and one so now this neural network has done the job for you that you that and gate has been performed here okay in the same way if the threshold is kept 0 0.5 and the weights are 1 1 all the inputs will properly be satisfied and the outputs will be 0 1 1 1 okay but now what happened here what learning we could take that uh, a small neuron was developed uh, in a model part where they had given some weighted summation some inputs some weights some output and some threshold function but what we could understand, the weights are decided by us. If the weights are not perfect, the classification won't be perfect. Because if I would give here 2 or minus or 0 or something, any wrong weight or any wrong threshold, the output would be wrong. So these things are done manually by yourself. And is the aim of the neural network to do the things manually? No. The aim of the neural network is to automate the process, to automate the things. So you don't want the things to do by yourself. So there was another author called as the Rosen, <coughs> Rosenblatt, Frank Rosenblatt. So what he did, he kept the same network. He took the same network. And in the same network, he introduced two things. One thing he introduced the learning rate, learning rule. Okay, learning rule. He said that what the Maculo and Pitts did, okay, Warren Maculo and Pitts, they just gave a neurons replication but not the automated learning part because we don't tell our brain to do that our brain does it automatically so what i'll do i'll develop a learning rule which will automate the process and which will do these things on its own okay and another part is he introduced a bias see initially for the sum equals to summation of i equals to 1 to n i i w i this was the part only given by maculo and pitts in perceptron frank added plus b he added a, another part that is bias for it it's why it is added i'll tell you but these were the additions made in the perceptron the most basic neural network that is perceptron okay so the neurons in this network were similar to those of macula and pitts because same thing has been taken by this rosenblatt his key contribution was the introduction of uh, this learning rule for training the perceptrons network so what this learning rule did this learning rule automated the process when we'll go for one numerical no you'll understand how he automated the process okay so he automated the process using learning rule in addition to the variable weight values the perceptron model added an extra input that is bias I told you, right, there are two things added. One was the learning root, another was the bias. So the modified equation looks something like this. He added a bias in the equation. Now, why is bias important? So what happens many times, suppose when we come back to the clustering diagram, many times when the perceptron works, it, it the, the aim of the perceptron is to generate this line, right? Because data can't be changed. Data will be plotted here and here we should develop a line which will exactly be drawn from the middle of those two data, which will exactly classify two different data in different classes. And that line is to be drawn by the perceptron. So to push the line up or down, okay, suppose there comes a sample from the red class in the testing data in the above part, in the low risk customers, there comes a red sample. There is a children who is having his weight 
seventy kg, and who is very uh, like six point two meters height. So his height is very big. So he will be into the above class. So now to push our line above, so that the sample gets below class in the below class, the bias is used. So bias is an extra parameter. You can keep it zero or one while coding the neural network. We don't give it much importance because there are i1 to i n inputs along with i1 w1 to w n weights so there are 50 or hundreds of neurons which are doing the job so what will a one bias additional bias do okay so that is why we don't give it much importance but in a single neuron with less input bias had a lot of importance so it is a measure of how it is easy to get the perceptron to output one which means how easily can the one or zero class uh, be given uh, as an output by a model so bias is just a additional parameter it adds some weight for the sum so that the threshold is crossed easily okay because you check right the weighted sum is calculated then you check if it is less than the threshold you give class zero as output if it is greater than the threshold in the threshold activation function you give one as the output so bias just adds some value to the sum an extra parameter and learning rule okay so now let us understand the learning rule because see this is the learning rule frank rosenblant have given the perceptron's equation right so what it said because see you can't change the input can you change the input we can't change the input initially first data sample came 0 0 next 0 1 came can you change them no you can't change them they are fixed what you can change in the network you can modify weight because weight has the intelligence so at the end of the network we are finding the perfect weight correct so you can modify weight so what we are doing the weight of i plus 1 that is next network is the current weight plus the rate of change of weight there is some additional weight right we will add or we will subtract the current weight may have misclassified the sample so we need to add the weight right so how will we add the weight we will add it via formula eta into error into input how eta because eta is a learning uh, now learning rule and learning rate are the two different things the rule this complete rule introduced is learning rule for the perceptron model and this is a extra learning rate and what exactly does it mean by learning rate so suppose i come to your class to teach you now i'll ask a teacher ma'am what kind of students are they so ma'am will say they are very intelligent students so what i'll do i'll increase my learning rate i'll teach very high level concepts i won't go in very uh, detail correct so eta will be a high value okay it will be 0.7 and this generally lies in 0 to 1 so it will be 0.7 0.8 but if ma'am tells me no uh, the students are a bit uh, not that good so please go into details so that is why the learning rule will be 0.1 or 0.2 so it helps to learn your model with some certain rate so that is the multiplicative rate and it can be high or low it depends on you or you can set it to random also but this is one such hyper parameter okay which will be tuned in the validation part now this is error what does it mean by error error means target minus computed t minus y so how so suppose in this model my output is 1 okay my output is 1 and if my model also gives me 1 so error is what 1 minus 1 0 there is no error suppose my output is 0 and my model also gives me output 0 the error is 0 minus 0 1 uh, sorry 0 minus 0 0 because there is no error right because output was 0 it classified 0 output was 1 it classified 1 so there is no error but suppose my output was 1 it was desired that the output should come 1 but now the output came 0 it is a misclassification so the error is 1 minus 0 that is 1 correct this is the error which needs to be taught to the perceptron we need to tell the perceptron otherwise how will it learn it will just give input weight uh, weighted sum uh, threshold function output we tell the perceptron once again that go back this error has come and this according to this error you should modify your weights your weights are not good that are not helping our inputs to classify properly so we will take the error into the picture 
okay that is why along with the learning rate we should even add error if the error is 1 minus 1 0 0 minus 0 0 then there is no need to learn right because if there is no error in the network this value will be 0 t minus y will be 0 so this zero error will multiply with eta and input and you will get the zero error and the weight will be rate of change of weight will be zero and then you won't add anything so the current weight will be the next weight so w of i plus zero will be w of i plus one and why because the output was correct so you need not change your weight right why do you need to change the weight when the output is correct if there is some error in the mod in the learning of the model then only this value will be processed so learning rate into error error is t minus y t is the target output which we want the model to give y is the computed output which model is computing now after the input uh, inputting the data and then the subtraction of that is error and that error is multiplied with learning rate and the respective input and then you get the rate of change of weight delta w and that delta w is added with the current weight so that you get the new weight okay so i hope you have understood the learning rule but now the question occurs that why this it makes sense the current weight should be updated we should add some weight or we should reduce some weight so that the new inputs will get correctly classified that is why the formula also makes sense with the learning rate eta we are speeding up the processor or we are reducing the procedure so learning rate is there Error is something that will help uh, the weights to understand that how much error was occurred, 1 minus 0, 1 error, uh, the error was occurred with uh, ratio 1. So definitely we have to again change our weight so that the next input will be correctly classified. And this is how you kept on slowly, slowly training your model. And the input is one important factor. So eta into error into i. And error is target minus computed. And that is delta w. And this weight is added with the current weight to give the new weight. So this is what we understood. It makes sense to us. But why is, and, and the below part is the bias. So bias is nothing but the current B plus eta into error into input. But input is not there now. Why? Because input is nothing but one. So for bias, what they do, normally they give the input as one. Okay. So eta into error into one, that is eta into error only. But bias, we are not considering today because really it is not that important factor. But just because in the perceptron model it was introduced, I told you about bias. Okay. So now these things make sense to us. But now the new question arises that how did this get derived? You want to know, right, what exactly uh, Frank Rosenblatt did so that these formulas have come. So this brings us to the derivation of the perceptron. And see, I could skip this part, but it is really important and helpful to understand. Because if you don't understand the mathematical part beyond the uh, algorithm, what you will do, you will blindly use the algorithms. But this is how you won't be able to publish your papers. If you have to publish some good work, you will have to do modifications in the mathematical network, right? And that will only be possible if you understand the mathematics beyond it, behind it, okay? So let us understand. A bit difficult, but not impossible. Okay, let's put in a lot of efforts. Okay, you also and me also. And come on, let's get to it. So this is how network looks. X1, X2 are the two inputs to the network. W1, W2 are the two weights. For easy understanding, we have taken a neuron with only two inputs, X1 and X2, and two weights, W1 and W2. Now, X1 and X2 can't be changed. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. This will be random. These are not in your hand because input data is not in our hand. Data is completely unseen. Weights are in our hand. Okay. So, so input and weights are there. Now, what will happen initially? Weighted sum. So, x1 into w1 plus x2 into w2 plus bias into 1. So, bias is also added by perceptron. So, x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus bias. This is the weighted sum. And we put it in A. So A equals to this. Correct? Now, second step. What was second step? When the weighted sum happened, input W1, input W2, input W3, we sum up. Then we pass it through an activation function. So here also, that A is passed in a function. So function of A. And the output is nothing but equal to Y. So that goes in the Y. So this is the model. Right? But now, when you want to derive the formulas, you have to go for the derivative part. So we will look after the derivation and the right side we have shown the linear function 
and the function is linear now okay so how how what do we mean by linear function for for the same input we have the same output if the input is 2 output is 2 if the input is 5 output is 1 if the input is minus 7 its output is minus 7 linear activation function so in f of a if you pass 3 the y is also 3 okay this is linear activation function now in the left side bottom there is e equals to 1 by 2 t minus y square that is what that is the error okay we want to calculate the error because we give inputs then we classify it then at the end y comes like y should be zero output should be zero but output came one so we need to explain the model right that you have done something wrong because it is supervised we are training this model so that is why we tell that the error obtained is t minus y that the target output was one but minus you gave me output by your model as zero so one minus zero one is the output so this one is the error occurred but now you will say why is there a square and why is it a one by two because many times you see one by two t minus y whole square why is that one by two and two coming there so now what do we expect the network should come in a positive phase it should not contain any negative values because it will uh, cause a lot of uh, like complicated calculations so we do t minus y whole square okay so suppose target and y is 0 minus 0 it is 0 only 1 minus 1 0 not an issue if it is 1 minus 0 it was 1 only not an issue but if target would be 0 and system would output 1 so 0 minus 1 comes minus 1 right and that is what we don't want so we are squaring that value so every where where you find the term as squared understand that we want the model to output the positive numbers because our classes are 0 and 1 we don't want any negative output to come right that is where we are squaring the value now you will say okay fine you did t minus y whole square so 0 minus 1 is <clears throat> minus 1 its square is 1 so every of the uh, values are giving positive values now you will say why is it 1 by 2 why did you divide it by 2 what was the need to average it so now when you go for derivation of the formula you will understand if we do x square derivative of x square is 2x now you may be you may have forgotten the derivatives part but go back to your relevant 12th and remember them so x squares derivative is 2x so now when we will do a t minus y whole squares derivative it will be 2 into t minus y thing so that 2 should cut with something that is why we have divided with 2 because it doesn't make any sense to keep numbers there okay so 1 by 2 is kept to uh, cut that part we'll see that in the further derivative okay now y equals to a y a because y equals to function of a in the above diagram see in that circle y equals to function of a but what function we have used we have used linear activation function so in the linear activation function if function of 3 is 3 function of 5 is 5 that is why y is nothing but directly a because it is a linear activation function and t is what target output okay so now now this brings us to you have understood what is error formula what is y and what is t now let us go for the derivation just pay attention for five more minutes and you will be through the perceptron in detail while doing the numerical you will understand it very well but just please be focused okay so w1 equals to w1 minus learning rate into rate of change of error with respect to weight so this is w1 why are we subtracting it why is it a minus sign why there is a minus alpha into dabba e by dabba w why that minus sign comes i'll tell in the next uh, three moves but first understand we are trying to modify the weight correct because we understood that the uh, the output that has come is wrong so we need to go back we can't change the input we have to change the weights so how do we change the weights we change by adding the weight or decreasing the weight rather the weight must be very high where it gave a wrong classification or rather the weight must be very low where it gave very low, low value so we have to rather add or decrease the weight so that is why w1 equals to w1 plus or minus alpha learning rate into what we are doing now we are derivating the error we are derivating the error with respect to what with respect to weight one or weight two and why with respect to error because the only thing that can be modified is weight in the network you can't modify input 
okay so now okay let's go we have w1's value we have weight one we have alpha so we don't have to bother about them but now we should find what is daba e by daba w1 okay because we are modifying the weight so we did w1 minus alpha into daba e by daba w1 but what exactly is daba e by daba w1 so now i kept errors value okay daba by daba w1 of error what is error 1 by 2 t minus y whole square but in error there are two parameters t and y but what we are with respect to what are we deriving with respect to w1 do we have w1 in uh, error formula no so we can't derivate error with respect to w1 so now you should go for chain rule so what you should do you should divide it more so now in error what can you modify you can't modify target because target is again a fixed output 1 or 0 you can modify y y is 1 or 0 it can come anything right so you divided the chain rule into daba e by daba y and daba y by daba w y correct but now again question came that in daba e by daba w y i can derivate error with respect to y because in error we have 1 by 2 t minus y whole square so there we can do but look after the second derivative that is daba y by daba w1 so if we put the value of y that is nothing but a can we derivate a with respect to w1 again it doesn't make any sense so again you have to go for one more chain rule so there you did daba y by daba w1 is divided into daba y by daba a and daba a by daba w1 so the chain rule goes to three layers okay so error with respect to y y with respect to a and a with respect to w1 okay now why daba middle part is daba y by daba a can that be done yes it can be done because in the leftmost side if you see y equals to a so daba y by daba a is nothing but daba a upon daba a which is 1 so it can be derivated now let's look after the third part daba a by daba w1 can we derivate a with respect to w1 so let us go to the topmost circle and see there what is a x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus b so yes there is w1 in the formula of a so now we can derivate w1 with respect to a okay so with respect to w1 now we can derivate the upper part so now the chain rule is complete so let us go for individual derivations and put back the values so now first part is c daba e by daba w1 equals to three chain rules but first is daba e by daba y so in the middle part in the third part see daba e by daba y so instead of e you will put the formula of e 1 by 2 target minus y whole square so now there you derivated with respect to y so x square derivative is 2 into t minus y into minus y that is minus 1 okay so x square's derivative is not only 2x it is 2x into derivative of x so derivative of x with respect to x is always 1 that is why you don't see that thing in the same way it is not only y square right that you get 2y it is t minus y whole square so y is negative there minus y that is why minus 1 will also be multiplied so now 2 comes down 2 to gets cancel so t minus y into minus 1 that is why minus t minus y in the same time second derivative is dy by da and what is y y is nothing but a only so da by da is 1 so there it comes 1 third derivative is daba a by daba w1 and what is a a is above part weighted sum x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus bias so now when you are derivating with respect to weight 1 you get x1 as the output because see second and third part x2 w2 is nothing it's a constant it will be zero derivative of 7 derivative of 1 is zero derivative of constant is again zero bias now x1 w1 is derivative with respect to w1 so you will get x1 as the thing because what is the derivative of 3x the derivative of 3x is 3 so that is why the derivative of x1 w1 with respect to w1 is x1 okay so you found minus t minus y 1 and x1 so now you club all of these together it becomes daba e by daba w1 equals to minus t minus y into 1 into x1 which is nothing but minus of t minus y into x1 now let's do one thing 
let's put this back into the first formula that we saw w1 equals to w1 minus alpha into the error we obtained so that is minus and c minus c minus y and there also we have minus so these minus minus become plus so for the easy computation we wanted positive sign so we knew after the derivation we would get a negative sign that is why we already gave a alpha a negative sign so now this minus minus became plus and the final formula in the fourth uh, column could be seen w1 equals to old w1 plus the updated alpha into target minus y in, into x1 input see and they the same formula the previous this new weight equals to previous weight w of i plus rate of change of w that is nothing but this alpha is same as eta the error that is target minus y and the input as x1 so this is the way you derive the formula for the weights for the w2 it will be the same instead of x1 it will come x2 because see here in the third column third row when you are derivating delta a with respect to delta w2 you will get x2 as output because x1 w1 will be zero there the bias will be zero there because they both will be constant you are derivating with respect to w2 there you will get x2 so that is why in the second formula it came x2 understood so these are the formulas which are derived by the perceptron model by the <coughs> frank rosen blatt so that is why he introduced this learning rule now this formulas are derived permanently and your perceptron whenever you will code in your life you need to understand that the perceptron will work on this mathematical formula and this will never change for any so this model will learn on itself so let us go for a numerical okay now i want you to carefully observe this maybe this is not clearly visible but look into it deeply and let us see how the coding see you do the coding part right you copy the code from internet you modify a certain code and you just give data it outputs something correct but you need to understand that these things will be done in a back end part in a mathematical way so there is a and gate okay this and gate is uh, see x1 x2 are the first inputs 0011011 correct now weights we don't know right so randomly initially we initialize how do you know what are the perfect weights so for the first row you see point 2 and point 2 are the weights in the above section you see there is a t that is a threshold which i have initialized randomly to point 5 there is a weights initialization because for the network you even need the weights you don't know right what are the weights so i did w1 and w2 because two inputs x1 x2 so i gave two inputs as w1 and w2 weights point to point to i randomly initialized we also require learning rate eta or alpha so i initialized eta also as point to randomly and bias as zero because i don't want to consider bias right now because it's not a important factor i personally feel okay now you need to uh take care of and see in the after the two things i have drawn a box where there is a formula what is the formula eta into target minus computed into input correct so when will this be done when you get the wrong output okay so now first input is x1 x2 weights are 0.2 0.2 what is the target expected target row expected we know right for and gate it is 0 0 0 and 1 because 0 0 0 1 1 0 will always output 0 and only 1 1 will output 1 so that much we know but c is computed we don't know right what is computed and we don't know what is error delta w1 and delta w2 so initially when we do x1 w1 plus x2 w2 what it comes 0 into 0.2 0 into 0.2 that is 0 0 only you add them what does it come it comes 0 now we see is 0 greater than threshold is 0 greater than 0.5 no it is not greater so the computed output is 0 okay so now computed output is 0 so target is 0 and computed is 0 so what is the error target was 0 computed is also 0 so 0 minus 0 is 0 so when error is 0 in your formula there is no change in the weight 
because what is delta w it is learning rate 0.2 into target minus computed error that is zero only so you won't change anything the whole weight will be zero and the weight will be the same so delta w1 and delta w2 are again zero so in second row for w1 and w2 what you will write 0 0.2 0 0.2 okay because these are the same weights you don't need to modify because the classification was perfectly fine so in the same way what you did now x1 w1 x2 w2 so 0 into 0 0.2 is 0 only plus 1 into 0 0.2 1 into 0 0.2 is 0 0.2 now you thought okay so 0 0.2 is the weighted sum is 0 0.2 greater than threshold is 0 0.2 greater than 0 0.5 no 0 0.2 is not greater than 0 0.5 that is why the output is 0 by the activation function threshold threshold was set 0 0.5 your weighted sum came 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 is not greater than 0 0.5. That is why output is 0. So again, the computed value is 0. So the error is 0 minus 0, 0. So the, the weight updation will again not happen. So the same weight 0 0.2 comes. In the third row also, same process happens. Now, they come to the fourth row. What they do? They take x1, w1, x2, w2. So x1, w1 is 0 0.2 into 1. And x2, w2 is 0 0.2 into 1. So 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 is 0 0.4. Now, again, they see that 0 0.4, is it greater than threshold? Is it greater than 0 0.5? No, it is not greater. So the weight output given is again 0. Why? Because the 0 0.4 value was not above the threshold value. So if it is not above 0 0.5, the output will be 0. And the output computed is 0. But what was the target, the desired output? It was 1, right? So now there is some error that the network has made. So target minus computed, that is 1 minus 0, is 1. Okay, so there is some error that has happened. So now when the error has occurred, we need to update the weights. So we will come to the below formula. Come to the last part there only. Delta W1 equals to eta into target minus computed into input. So what is eta learning rate? 0 0.2. What is target minus computed? Error is 1. Error is 1. So that is why 1. And what is the input? Input is also 1. See X1. X1 was 1, right? And X2 was also 1. So 1. So 0 0.2 into 1 into 1 is 0 0.2. So the additional weight that is delta W is 0 0.2. And what was the previous weight? That was also 0 0.2. So the updated weight that you will feed to the network is 0 0.4. Same will happen for delta W2. Delta W2 will also be calculated in the same manner. So delta W2 is 0. Now what I did, this was the first epoch or the iteration. I went for the second iteration. In the second iteration, again, I give inputs because I need to again train the network. It made error. It is not trained perfect. So I give 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. But now there is something new that has come that is weight. Initially, weights was 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Now, after computation, in the second iteration, we got 0 0.4 and 0 0.4. Now, again, compute the same. 0 into 0 0.4 plus 0 into 0 0.4 is 0. So the target is 0 and the uh, computed is also 0. So now there is no error, no weight updation in the second layer. Also in the second number, 0, 1. So 0 into 0 0.4 plus 1 into 0 0.4. It is nothing but 0 0.4, which is not greater than the threshold 0 0.5. That is why the output is again 0 computed. So target minus computed is 0 minus 0 is again 0. There is no error, no weight updation. Same for the third uh, value also. Now let's come to the fourth part. 1, 1. 1 into 0 0.4 plus 1 into 0 0.4. Nothing but 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4. That is 0 0.8. See, is 0 0.8 greater than threshold? Is it above 0 0.5? Yes, it is above. That is why the output that will come is 0 0.8. That is greater than 0 0.5. So the system will uh, output computed value as 1. So that is why 1 minus 1 is again a 0 error. So now when the network has given all the inputs uh, 0 uh, error, uh, sorry, 
output or error value of all the uh, inputs as zero you should stop training the model understood so these were the learning rate these formulas will be coded and perceptron will take a lot of inputs and it will keep on iterating on itself based on these four formulas so we used only these formulas based on these we trained the model and we could see in the second iteration because the data was very simple it was only a basic and gate in the second iteration only you could achieve the zero error so now the model is trained with the weights now if you give this model to the new company you will give this model with the weight 0.4 and 0.4 so the perfect trained weights for the model which contained intelligence are 0.4 and 0.4 so with the help of 0.4 and 0.4 two weights all the four inputs will be correctly classified this is what is the ultimate goal or the aim of the neural network understood so you understand we couldn't ever modify this input these were same we could only modify the weights okay so the weights are something that contain intelligence the weights will be modified by these learning rule how these weights are derived this uh, i have mentioned in this ppt the derivation is given here okay so based on this the uh, frank rosenblatt have derived this formulas these are the learning rule by which he have automated the process and that's where you use those formulas the threshold values learning rate which could be a random number but weights are something that are learning right see so you saw there is some error occurred so based on that error you updated the weight delta w and delta w2 then you added that weight to the old weights you got new weights and these new weights will classify something so out of 100 samples 40 will misclassify then in the next epoch some better weights will come there only 20 will misclassify in the third epoch only four will misclassify in the last epoch all the uh, things will be perfectly getting classified so this is all about a perceptron now the two or three concepts i have to explain now are convergence theorem activation function and loss function but i would like to ask ma'am should i continue or should i continue this tomorrow uh sir i will leave, leave this to participants so uh participants can we continue the session or can we yeah, continue can you unmute and tell that should we continue or do you need a break to recall these things and tomorrow we can continue interested people uh, the participants can also no uh, put a comment in the chat box yeah you can comment on the chat box or you can unmute and talk whatever is comfortable with you people tomorrow also we can go now also we can go okay there is one participant telling uh, we can continue tomorrow okay uh, there are multiple replies here so uh, they are requesting uh, for the session to be continued tomorrow okay not an issue not an issue because okay. yeah i understand it's uh, so many things to take all of a sudden and uh, it's mm -hmm. a long course 2 uh, 3 months course but yeah if we are going so short uh, you should just understand a basic concept how things are functioning and totally cool ma'am today it is too much for them also so we can go tomorrow yeah thank you sir uh, thank you for the session and the participants uh, the link has been shared in the chat box i request everyone to uh, fill the link and however the recorded the videos will be shared to your respective mail addresses uh any queries uh, any queries you can mention in the chat box otherwise you can unmute yourself and speak also yeah the, the recorded people... videos will be shared yeah 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 the recorded videos will be shared by ma'am on the respective youtube channel for the for your further uh, okay i can hello hello please, please come uh thank you shubham we uh, the session was very interesting and we had learned a lot of things about the uh, neural network and the basics of ml and ai so dear participants so tomorrow we are starting the session at uh, uh, 11 o'clock so please join the session at 10:50 only and uh, we are having two sessions so one from uh, shubham sir from 11 to 12 and uh, one more session from spurti b where she is going to discuss about the python and the basics and how we are going to do it 
uh, uh, any other things uh, the p presentation and all the videos will be shared to your registered mail ids thank you shubham sir thank you ma'am thank you it was a pleasure to give you idea about all those things that i know yeah the session was very interesting uh, thank you so much sir thank you ma'am thank you any feedback I, uh, that i can change few things uh, that uh, students haven't understood if i have mm. to go slow or fast anything uh, please do ask students uh, sure sir oh please share the ppt sir what you have done today yeah yeah ma'am at the end of the day i'll share all the ppts complete okay, uh, information in one ppt on the have kept so i'll be okay. sharing it with students for the further reference also i you can give them uh, my mail id for any further doubts th that they have ma'am okay okay sir okay thank you so much Thank you, participants. Thank you we'll meet you tomorrow. Listening. Thank you, everyone, for patiently listening. I hope you people have at least got few good information. Uh, and thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Ah, yeah. oh, thank you, sir. Participants, please fill the uh, link before you leave. Gracias.